Hi, Dan Johnson here at AirVenture 2011, and we are talking with Mike Kraft of Lycoming. This is a brand of engine that everybody knows, but we don't always know it on light sport aircraft. That's starting to change now. Mike, welcome to uh, AirVenture. Hey. Thanks for doing some hard work on the engines. We see them on some airplanes here. We're going to look at the airplanes more. But first, you wanted to tell me a few things about some of the work that Doc Bailey and the Renegade folks have been doing and relative to the Thunderbolt engine. Yeah. Take it away, yeah, Mike. And I guess to the hard work comment, you know, in management, we can just kind of direct. A lot of the hard work's been done by the engineers and the manufacturing guys. And Understood. We'll possible. give those guys so their fair credit. They here. get all the perspiration of all. But in front of the booth here today, you guys have two aircraft from Renegade, and you have the Kid Fox. There's other OEM uh, light sport aircraft manufacturers and, and kit builders that are working with us on the engine. I think the, the biggest part of it is we had a, a group of kit builders at the factory that were looking at the Lycoming portfolio and weren't quite satisfied with what they saw and uh, literally told them, well, let's go have some pizza and some drinks after hours and let's see what we can come up with. So we started with the 235 and said, I'd like to do this, this, and this on it. We came up with the initial concept that was a few years ago and now we're in the phase of it's real, it's flying, and hopefully rolling out and meeting a great customer response. So uh, these aircraft have the 233 in it. And there's two varieties the way we're doing these right now. Direct to the OEM is a more standard configuration. Via Thunderbolt, you can get a Thunderbolt Custom. So the aircraft over here to, to my left has got fuel injection on it. It's got a, a different type of ignition system, you know, basically customizing it on the Thunderbolt side. This engine over here is the more standard engine with also with electronic spark ignition system, vertical updraft carburetor. Uh, you know, 115 horsepower at, uh, at rated RPM and you know, about close to 40 pounds lighter than your standard O235. So we're pretty okay, so proud of it. So you cut about 40 pounds out of it, and uh, you could maybe touch on a couple of the things that you did mm -hmm. to achieve that, because that's pretty significant weight loss yeah. against the, the total it started out at. And then you reference the engine with the uh, fuel injection and mm -hmm. I think some different uh, ignition systems. Yeah. But is that something you're moving toward, or is that just an experiment to see how that works? Well, the, exper that the experimental market always has a broader range of options that we can customize for them. So it's and it's, that particular aircraft is still experimental. Yes, that, air that particular aircraft is still experimental. But he does have SLSA approval on his airplane, yeah. so they would be using this engine. Is that correct? So, so you have they, they have a variety of ways that they're they're trying to serve you on the Renegade side. The best thing is to talk to Renegade on that. But from the engine side. Thunderbolt experimental, we have a lot of different options on there. On the more standard ASTM qualified side, it'll be a more standardized product as well as we're going to Part 33 certification on it. You asked how we managed to get there. The single biggest item that we did was going to electronic spark ignition and doing away with two magnetos along with all the stuff inside the engine that's required to drive those. That's probably the single biggest hitter. What, what kind of weight did that series of steps alone? Oh, now you're taxing my engine. Well, now give me a rough ballpark here. I think that we probably took out close to, uh, I'm guess I'm not kind of close. We took out close to seven to eight pounds. We won't hold you to the. We won't hold your feet to the yeah, fire. But it, it was significant. Seventy pounds, seven, seven zero. No, seven, one seven. Seven to eight pounds. Seven to eight pounds. Right. Okay, I thought then, that was a lot right, there. And then we went after the the sump and uh, accessory housing, starter ring gear, uh, managed to put in hydraulic lifters for the tappets on that stuff. So we you added that. You, you added that in. Then, added so. that in. There was a little more weight, but uh, and what did that do for the done. engine? Uh, that gets you out of having to do the mechanical adjustment on your on your okay. rocker. Okay. You have to do that, so it's more of a maintenance. So a lower feature. maintenance issues. Then. Lower maintenance issue. Right? What kind of TVO have you got on this engine? Uh, well, the O235 now, and, it, and this share is the same power section as the O235. The O235 has a 2400 hour TVO. 2400 hours. That's like okay. one of the big numbers in aviation then for a piston engine. Yeah, I mean the O235 has got a lot of history to it. Uh, understand very well and once again the power section on this shares a lot of commonality with the O235. Now when you say power section you're talking about the crank, the crankcase, connecting rods, pistons, you know all those basic elements are all things other than lot. carburation or ignition and stuff like that. Yeah, even all the carburetor we stuck with the standard model right there. Ignition is new so uh, in terms of the ignition system uh, we got you know continue to gather durability and test experience on that to get that up. But uh, it's, it's very unlike your Magneto, you're going to have a different service interval on the electronic spark ignition. And uh, it looks some very promising for How does the engine, I, I, I'm hesitating on exactly how to ask this because I'm not looking for a retail price because that's rarely what anybody pays. It comes as part of an engine or some other package. But put it into a ballpark estimate for me, Mike, about how this engine compares cost-wise with, let's say, the Rotax or Jabiru that have been dominant in this sector. We're going to be very 
competitive for those. They can stay in the ballpark of those guys. I mean, most people know like Lycoming to be bigger engines and, of course, higher cost, therefore. So there, some people have said, well, it'll be too costly to go to Lycoming. Well, part of the cost on that is, is the, there's a lot of features that we customize on the engines for the aircraft. When we went into this category, we said, listen, we're going to have to narrow down the options, consolidate it. So it's got a standard, one standard starter, one standard alternator. You know, about the only option. I see some of the other guys in the not. GA world are asking for different kinds of those pieces. Yeah, is that if right? we want to keep the cost down, we have to keep the configuration sure. pretty standard. More volume but that way. In an aircraft like this, we don't need a lot of options. Now, you've also been, we're talking about Renegade and Kitbox here, but you're also talking to, I've seen the installation over in Europe on the Technum. Yes, the P90. And um, somebody else is talking to you about an engine uh, on a. Other publicly announced Brumby of Australia. Okay. Their model. Um, Trying to remember all the. You got the American announced. Legend here. American, American Legend, Legend is using so, it. Uh, yeah, the folks from FK Light Plane in Germany are talking about an engine for their uh, Comet because they would like to do some aerobatics in it. So we actually, via the Thunderbolt line, we've actually equipped engines with the aerobatic kit with 235. And, and Lightcoming as a company is okay with the aerobatic application of these engines? And the aerobatic kit installed, absolutely. Oh, sure, with, yeah. the, with the right elements yes. and components yeah. that are necessary to do that inverted oil and some of those kinds of things. Yes, the inverted oil system and the experimental model, uh, once again, talking about a very different type of situation. Around sure, that. understood. Yeah. Now, you've mentioned Thunderbolt a couple of times. Tell me what that means relative to the engine. Everybody just knows O233 and like only. So Thunderbolt is a new term, meaning what? Well, Thunderbolt's, been, me anyway, yeah, me Thunderbolt's been around a while, but it's mainly been the vehicle for, like I said, the higher end engines and uh, people who are looking for either, you know, everything from just a little bit of bling to real performance mods. Um, bling is not a term I normally associate okay, with right, engines. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, Good quite one, frankly, you, you mean can the see, shiny cylinder covers? Yeah, the shiny cylinder, the custom paint jobs, you know, at that level. Yeah. It's anything that moves you out of kind of a standard uh, uh, certified production engine into the experimental world, so it's anything from a custom paint job to some real performance mods. On the extreme end of it, okay, you have the things that we did for one of our Red Bull you know, racing pilots to John Sharp's engine at the Reno races, so there's some stuff out there that's pretty extreme. So here's kind of Thunderbolt 2. Huh? Yeah, Thunderbolt <laughs> is really, uh, to give you an idea, Thunderbolt is kind of the engineer's playground at that company, so it's a, it's a concept area It's allowed us to push some technology areas on the engines. It is purely experimental. And there's different degrees of, of uh, performance. Well, experimental, but this is going on a certified aircraft in the this, sense of a yeah. light sport being yeah. certified. Some people recognize yeah. that term is a little different, and there's, it's true that it is. Right. But if you actually go to the website, you can see that there's three different levels of Thunderbolt. There's kind of the extreme, the signature, and the other ones. And, and we try to describe pretty much for the owners what level they're dealing with there. When you get to the extreme end, we're obviously dealing one-on-one -on -one with the pilot and his chief mechanic as to how far you want to go. Just how far you can push right. this engine. If it's a, if it's now, Average user, I mean, it sounds to me like sort of the sport package on a car where you get here's your regular little yeah. sporty car. Yes. Now, oh, with the sport package, you get fancy right. wheels and more horsepower or yeah. whatever. Yeah. But in this world where we're selling to well, just your average civilian pilot that's mostly flying these recreationally, uh, with that performance advantage, do you have anything? In fact, what I'm getting at is would they go, oh, well, I don't really want a performance package. In fact, I'd rather you derated it a little bit so it'll last me forever and I don't have to do anything. The standard package here is the typical like homing range. I mean, it is, it is at uh, 115, I think, believe at 27, 2800. That's the solid like homing core range on this. Uh, anybody that we deal with on these performance packages, we go into a whole different realm of working. Okay. Everybody's so this one's going to be solid as the name yeah. is old. Huh? That's, okay. That's great. great. How long has Light Company been around? Uh, it will be, I think it's 98 years this year. 98 and, uh, years? We'll be moving to 100 years. Just before there were airplanes, huh? Just before there was airplanes. Yeah, we started Berg on, you know, it started on Duesenberg's cords and over 200 Is that miles. right? I was being facetious. Oh, really? no, absolutely. Oh. We, we started out, uh, actually, the history of the company dates back to bicycles and sewing machines, moved into automobiles, and then in 1929 certified the, uh, the first engine, predating the FAA. Uh, but we have FAA production certificate number three, so it tells you how Is that right? Wow. Uh, that's the lowest number I've that's ever right. heard. So. And uh, it's my job to make sure that we're set up to be around there for another 100 years. Good for you. Best of luck. So, um, principal question now. We want to go get some more information. You guys got this big, complicated website because you got a lot of stuff yeah. to offer. How does the light sport community find just your stuff? 
Well, we uh, excuse me, the stuff for their airplanes. Okay. The the light sport community, we mainly will work with the airframers who are designing light sport aircraft. If you're working on the experimental side, uh, we have some association with the kit builders. We're doing those type of kits, and when you work. When you go to the Thunderbolt side, we actually have the Thunderbolt product manager who's actually here at the booth. Okay. His name is Jeff Scons. And Jeff Scons. Jeff Scons. Okay. You go to the website under Thunderbolt, you get the, the direct contact information right there. So maybe go to likehoming.com. Yep, likehoming.com. And then uh, can you type in a search for Thunderbolt or something? Yep. Or is Thunderbolt just part of the one of the Thunderbolt pull downs pretty, or something? Pretty obvious there on the, on the website. Great. Very good. Uh, thanks for speaking with us today. Well, thank you for having us. I'll have more information on my website. I already got some stuff on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. And speaking today with Mike Kraft of Lycoming, we're reporting for aircraftreporters.tv.